Hi, I'm Shay. I'm Marshall. Shay, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Have you ever had to move far away for a job or something where you had to leave friends and family behind? Uh, I haven't had to move for a job, but I did immigrate from Nigeria to Canada when I was 15 years old. I had to leave a lot of my friends behind, people I went to school with, I did life with, and it was really hard to say goodbye to a lot of these people. And it, it took time to work through. And you know what, even now, like some of these friends, I'm not in touch with them anymore. Man, that's gotta be so tough, moving from Africa to Canada, seeing snow for the first time. But the cool part is that your family back in Africa still loves you and supports you. And it kind of touches on our big idea today, that nothing can separate us from God's love. And that's exactly true. So we're gonna watch this God's story and learn more about that. Knock, knock. Disappearing. What's up everybody, it's Jimmy again. A number of years ago, I got invited to do this teaching thing overseas and I was really excited. I'd never been to Germany before and I was going with a group of my friends, but then it settled in that it was gonna be a long time away, like two weeks and I have two little girls and wasn't super excited about being away from them. But the time came for me to go and I remember that moment of like, leaving my two little girls to take off into an airplane. And I got to Germany and kind of unpacked and saw all these little love notes stuck into my clothes. And I remember thinking, I hate being away from my kids. So being away from family sucks and being away from my kids is the worst. But this leads us to today's big idea. And that is that nothing can separate us from God's love. So last time, we started in this book called Romans, and Romans is a letter from Paul to a bunch of people in like home churches in, in this city. And he instructs them law versus grace, and that the way of grace is the way of love, and that the way of love is the Holy Spirit living within us, and that the Holy Spirit produces love and moves us forward in God's ethic of love. But then he also talks about that God's power, God's presence is made perfect in weakness. That we can still know that God is on our side even when things are really tough. So let's read what Paul has to say next. So Romans 8 verse 31 to 34, here's what it says. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he didn't even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? So who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Okay, so that is a big deal. If God is for us through Jesus, who, who or what can stand against us? So let's continue reading, uh, starting in verse 35 now. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute, poor or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we're killed every day. We're being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And he continues, and I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now this is a game changer. You have to remember Paul is writing letters, uh, little nuggets of wisdom to churches that are most definitely struggling, saying nothing can separate you from God's love. It's the same for us today, right? So guess what? You, yes, you, God loves you. No matter what you think, no matter how bad or even good you feel you are, God loves you you. Let that sink in. Write it on your hand. Remember it. No matter what, God loves you. That's it for today. It's been great being with you. It's Jimmy, your boy. We'll see you next time. Wow. You know, when Paul wrote that not even death or life could separate us from God's love, he spoke a really powerful truth that can carry us through some of the toughest times in our lives. And speaking of tough times, we're going to hear a story from Kadia who experienced some really hard things in her life, but through that time still felt God's amazing love. Yes, let's watch this.
I see love as just showing people that you care or going that extra mile just to show someone that they're important to you. Um, you could do like small little things like maybe buying them like a hot chocolate or a cookie or just being for them when they're having a rough day, giving them a hug and just asking them if things are okay, stuff like that. So when my dad passed away, lots of people brought us different kinds of foods just to show love to us. I think it helped my mom a lot because she didn't have to make meals, so that gave her more time just to do what she needed to do. It took a lot of stress away from her. A lot of people came up to us and said that they were praying for us or thinking of us, and that really was nice to know. A lot of people offered to like have me and my sister over at their house just to give us something to do so that we didn't have to think about how upset we were, and that really made a big difference. When my dad passed away, I was still pretty young, so I didn't get a chance to know my dad super well, but like, I have a couple really good memories of him. Like, often when my mom went out, we'd watch Star Wars movies or wrestle together. It was really fun. A couple years ago when my mom got sick with cancer, it was really scary because, I mean, just a few years before that, I lost my dad. And so I was just really scared and I didn't know if I would lose her. And she was always in bed and sick and that was just pretty scary. So once again, people just came and brought lots of food, just even did little things like hugging us, maybe just coming and like telling us that they were praying for us and that it was gonna be okay. And that just really meant a lot. We had someone who brought maybe like 40 lunches for our school so that we didn't have to make those after school and that was a huge, huge help. So even though I was still really scared about my mom, I just felt so loved and so comforted by all these people showing that they loved us. At first, I couldn't really understand why God was doing this and it was kind of just like, why me? So around this time, I'd started going to the youth at my church, and that's when I really started to feel connected with God and got a better relationship with Him. So luckily, my mom was healed and she was cancer-free, and that was just such a relief and felt like a huge weight off my shoulders. And I was just so thankful for God. I feel like this really brought me closer with my mom because it just kind of made me realize how lucky I am to have her in my life and how thankful I am for her. I love baking and cooking and so sometimes I just like bake or cook for my mom to show her that I love her. I love all kinds of foods like pasta, chicken pot pie, they're all really yummy. And I feel like food's a great way to show people that you love them. My sister, we get along pretty well. Sometimes we bicker a little bit, but other than that, we get along pretty well. <laughs> Me and my mom have gone through so much, and I just think that kind of brought us closer together, and we'll always stay that way. Through all these sad things, I know that God was there for me, right beside me, and even though maybe I couldn't see it at the time, now looking back at it, I realize that he played such a big role in my story. Wow, that food looked really good that Katie and her family got. I know, I just got hungry all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. But you know what, those simple acts of love, people bringing food to them, just showed that, you know, God was with Katie and her family through that rough time. And it just shows that we can always remember in hard times like Kadia and in good times in life, we can reach out to God and he's listening to everything. Exactly. And you know what? We're going to break into our small groups right now and we're going to see what that looks like in our lives. See ya.